there is a simple fact about ratios that is going to make your life so much easier and it works like this if a over b equals 3 over 5 then we know for sure that a must be a multiple of 3 and b must be a multiple of 5. now we can see that pretty clearly if we cross multiply you can see that this is only going to work if a is a multiple of 3 and b is a multiple of 5. now the other way we can get there is to again use what you learned in fourth grade because your fourth grade teacher said look you can manipulate ratios and kind of make them anything you want as long as you multiply the top and the bottom number by the same thing so if a over b is 3 over 5 that ratio 3 over 5 that is going to be the same thing as 6 over 10 or 15 over 25 etc now this like pretty obvious insight that you've known kind of forever is incredibly powerful on the test let's take a look at a couple questions all right let's take a look at how these ratios work in an actual number properties question and i think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at how gosh darn helpful ratios really are a certain sightseeing company rents bikes in hawaii the company rents men's bikes women's bikes and children's bikes if the ratio of women's bikes to men's bikes is five to two how many children's bikes does the company own all right now what are we being asked for here how many children's bikes does the company own we need the actual number of children's bikes and what are we told in the question well we're given the ratio a ratio of women's bikes to men's bikes is five to two that means w over m equals five over two which means w is a multiple of five and m is a multiple of two all right let's see what we get from the first statement and see if it's enough to determine exactly how many children's bikes we have well we are told the ratio of children's bikes to men's bikes is seven to three that means c over m equals seven over three that means c is a multiple of seven and m is a multiple of three that is not going to be enough because all we have are ratios we haven't crossed the bridge into the land of real numbers we can basically make children's bikes almost any number we want so long as we keep these ratios in line we can make the ratios move up and down the, the number line almost at will we don't know how many children's bikes we have insufficient what about statement number two the number of children's bikes is less than 28 well thank you very much that just tells us that we have anywhere between I guess 0 and 28 children's bikes that is also insufficient all right so the question is what happens when we combine these well combined we know that W is a multiple of 5 and C is a multiple of 7 we also know that M is a multiple of 6 because we are told that M is a multiple of 2 and M is a multiple of 3 that must mean that m is a multiple of six we are also told that children's bikes is a multiple of seven and we know that the number of children's bikes is less than 28. hey they're not that many possibilities then because we could have seven children's bikes that's possible now if we had seven children's bikes we would have three men's bikes because remember the ratio of children's bikes to men's bikes is seven to three hey are we allowed to have three men's bikes no we're not m must be a multiple of six and three is not a multiple of six now it is possible that we have 14 children's bikes right children have to be a multiple of seven it has to be less than 28 we could have 14 children's bikes if we had 14 children's bikes how many men's bikes would we have well we'd have to have six because again the ratio of children's bikes to men's bikes has to always stay seven to three are we allowed to have six men's bikes yeah yeah we are we're told that men's bikes must be a multiple of six and six is a multiple of six now it's also possible that we have 21 children's bikes right children have to be a multiple of seven and less than 28 we can have 21 children's bikes and if we did have ch 21 children's bikes how many men's bikes would we have well we'd have nine because again that ratio of children's bikes to men's bikes has to stay seven to three are we allowed to have nine men's bikes no we're not men's bikes must be a multiple of six and guess what nine is not a multiple of six so we know exactly how many children's bikes we must have there's only one possibility we must have 14 children's bikes and our answer is c good job 
Let's take a look at another one. If a and b are integers, what is the value of a times b? And we're given a couple statements. First statement is b is a prime number, and the second statement is 2a equals 19b. And what is it that we're looking for again? Ah, we need to figure out what the value is of a times b. All right, well, let's look at the statements. Statement one, b is a prime number. Could I have written a less helpful statement than that? I don't think so. B could be like literally an infinite number of numbers. It could be almost anything. And I didn't give you any information about A. That is clearly an insufficient statement. You're welcome. And then uh, number two, we have 2A equals 19B. Now this is important. When we're in you know, kind of word problem um, land, we like 2A equals 19B. That's a nice little linear equation that we can manipulate. But when we are in the land of number properties, 2A equals 19B actually isn't that helpful of a statement. What we like to do instead is turn that into a ratio. So 2A equals 19B is the same as A over B equals 19 over 2. And why do we like to do that? Well, now we know something about A and B. We know that A is a multiple of 19, and we know that B is a multiple of 2. Now, does that help us enough to figure out what the value of A times B is? Well, not really, because it's possible that A is 2, which would make B 19, and that would make A times B 38. OK, fine. But you know, it's also possible that A is 4, which would make B 38. Remember, you got to keep them in a 19 to 2 ratio. Uh, and that would make A times B, I have no idea, but it's not 38. So no, we don't know the exact value of A times B just using statement number two. Now what happens if we combine the statements? Well, combined, we know that A still must be a multiple of 19 and B is a multiple of two. And from statement number one, we get that B is prime and from statement number two, b must be even, must be multiple of two, there is only one number that is both prime and a multiple of two. b must equal two. We know the value of b. If b equals two, then a must equal 19, because again, we have to keep that ratio of 19 to two intact. That means we know for sure what the value of a times b is. Our answer is c. Okay. Good job, let's try another one. If a, b, and c are integers, is a times b a multiple of 27? Okay, and again, we're given a couple statements. We have 2a equals 3b, and we have 4b equals 3c. And what are we asked? A time, is a times b a multiple of 27? That's really asking us, is a times b over 27 an integer? Remember, multiple means the big number. Or if you combine the DNA of A and B, do you get three cubed? You get three threes out of the deal. Okay, well, let's see. Let's take a look at statement number one first. 2A equals 3B. We know that that for us is most helpful as a ratio. So A over B is three over two, which means A is a multiple of three and B is a multiple of two. So it's possible that A is three. And it's also possible that b is 2, in which case a times b would be 6. And guess what? 6 does not contain the DNA of 27. So no. But you know what else is also possible? Possible that like a is 18. And if a was 18, that would make b 12. So when we multiply numbers, we just combine their DNA. So that would mean a times b would be 3 times 3 times 2. That's DNA of 18. And then we combine that with the DNA of 12, which is 3 times 2 times 2. Well, I don't know exactly what that number is, but it's got more than enough threes to be a multiple of 27. So in that case, yeah, it could be a multiple of 27. From this statement, can we tell for sure whether a times b is a multiple of 27? No. Might not be. Might be 6. Or it might be, it might have a ton of threes in it. That thing's insufficient. Let's take a look at statement number two and see what we make of that. Well, 4b equals 3c again. That's given us a ratio. b over c is equals 3 over 4, which means b is a multiple of 3 and c is a multiple of 4. 
Well, if B is three and C is four, uh, boy, do we know what A times B is? No, we don't have really any information on A at all. Maybe we got enough threes, maybe not, we don't know. Now, it is also possible that B just all on its own is 27. So, you know, B just on its own could contain enough threes. But again, we don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Two is insufficient. Now, what happens when we combine these? Well, let's see. When we combine them, we get that ratio A over B is three over two. So A is a multiple of three and B is a multiple of two. And we get B over C equals three over four, which makes B a multiple of three and C a multiple of four. That means that B must be a multiple of six because we're told that B is a multiple of two and B is a multiple of three. Well, that means that the lowest number B could possibly be is six. B can't be any less than six. That means that the lowest number that A could be is nine because we need to keep the ratio of A over B is three over two. That means when we combine them, the least amount of DNA that we can give A and B is six times nine. So the least amount of DNA they're gonna have is two times three times three times three. And you know what? That is enough DNA. At its very least, A times B must contain all the DNA of 27. So our answer is C. Okay. Good job.